I, 23 male just leased my first apartment with my girlfriend. 22 female of two years, we were only living there for a month before I found evidence of her affair. She let me know while we were dating that she was pretty sure she was bi, I shrugged it off. That was fine. Right. As long as she knew what it meant to be in a committed and loyal one-on-one -on -one relationship. I asked to make sure she was only exclusively seeing me after four months into our relationship and she said yes, she would message her friends all the time but promised me she took her relationship seriously fast forward a year and a half and we're very much in love and getting our first apartment together a sign lease with each other. I was a little nervous but I thought that was normal. We were together so often and we'd be living together. There's no way she could have something going on behind my back. I was kind of wrong because she got away with something for a month. One morning as I got ready for work, I found long blonde hair in our bed since I had short black hair and she had curly brown hair. I was pretty certain qualified as evidence of an affair. I showed it to her and asked if she had someone else in our bed. She shrugged and asked what I'd do about it. If she did. I was speechless and she added that if I was cool about it, maybe I could join them. I said I would end the relationship immediately because I wouldn't stand for being cheated on. She said we just signed the lease together. So I have to suck it up and appreciate what I had. I told her she was a psycho for thinking I was okay with this. And I paid a visit to the leasing office. The landlord was very empathetic and outraged at my story. She wrote me a letter that rescinded the lease. My ex was furious and started screaming and throwing stuff around. She wouldn't be able to lease the apartment without me because she still didn't have a job. I asked her why she couldn't just move in with a P. And she said it was none of my business. I didn't care. At least I knew she couldn't have a place to bring her back to the landlord, had another rental available and she let me rent for cheap to help me cope with an unexpected life change. So my ex tried reaching me for a month until she finally gave up. I know she hates me. Even though she's a heartless cheater, she didn't have the maturity to rent a home with someone. And I wish I would have been able to tell her that living with someone requires selflessness, understanding and responsibility. She acted like living with someone only meant they had to help her pay the bills no matter how badly she treated them. That selfish and controlling behavior. If I ever saw it, I became a house party host, which is something I never would have thought to do before in fear of my fiancé going out of her way to flirt with other people. I'm enjoying my freedom and certainly hope others don't fall for someone as disrespectful as this girl. I am so glad you were able to get the least rescinded on the grounds of her infidelity. I can't believe she had the nerve to act like what she did wasn't despicable any woman out there listening. I hope you never behave like this woman. She thought the world and her fiancé owed her something when she was only proving what a terrible spouse she was. She was far from the selfless, respectable and supportive woman that men need as their wives. I think if she would have spent more time getting to know herself before dating or committing herself to a serious relationship, she could have figured out more for for certain who she would want to be with for the long haul or even if being in a long-term committed relationship was for her. If it wasn't, of course, she would need to find an honest way to provide for herself and maintain her independence instead of roping in someone to help her pay the bills. Thank you for sharing this story. I have faith you're going to be okay because you knew you had to dump her and got away from her quickly. Anyways, let's now get into today's second story. My wife 38I40 celebrated our 8-year wedding anniversary. That was the last fond memory I have of us because after that, I became aware of her secret relationship. I wasn't very fond of social media or people. So I didn't have any accounts like that. I know it might be hard to believe if it makes you feel better. I made one for the purpose of investigating my wife's activities. I got an email the week after our eight-year wedding anniversary that confirmed my wife's decision to move her phone number from our phone plan to a pages s. It named the account. Her line was added to which included a PS name. My vision started spinning. 
I joined Facebook and looked up his profile. It turned out he just celebrated a two-year dating anniversary with my wife. I could not believe what I was looking at. It was like an alternate reality where my wife never met me. She had all this time and trust without me watching her to leave our home and live a second life with this guy. I felt betrayed and worthless. I took screenshots of the profile and the confirmation email I presented these to my wife when she arrived home from her sister's. So she said it was hard for her to speak because the proof was right in front of her. She was dating another man for two years bragging about it on Facebook and convincing her family that he was the same man. She told them she married. We just had an on-again off-again relationship. It made no sense. She started sobbing and told me she seriously regretted it. But he was helping her pay back student loans and improve her credit, which would ultimately help us. I told her that didn't make up for her sleeping with him. I was screaming at this point. Almost ten years of my life was wasted on her. She told me it was purely a business scheme to her and she only considered him a friend. She said it wasn't her fault. He took her so seriously and pronounced their love on Facebook. I told her she was blind and stupid. If she couldn't admit she was taking advantage of this man and me, she was only looking out for herself and didn't care how either of us would feel if we knew the other existed. She looked ashamed, but she just asked me if this meant she had to leave. I told her to get out and called her a cheating pile of dirt. So she left but she only walked the 20-minute walk to her dad's house. She didn't take her car, which sat in the driveway parked behind my car, in the garage. She took her car keys and two bags of belongings with her. I tried calling her the next day when I realized she didn't drive but had her keys and she didn't answer. I tried over and over but she only texted with you couldn't forgive me. So now you have to live without me no matter how hard it is. I only replied by asking why she left her car in my driveway. This is when it dawned on me that I hadn't contacted AP even though I most definitely could. My wife was probably getting rides around town from him and she just wanted me to be inconvenienced and slower to leave her because I couldn't drive anywhere. Well, I fixed that really quickly. I sent him proof of our marriage anniversary date and everything and waited for things to happen. He freaked out and asked me if he could come to talk to me. I agreed, he came to my house and we spoke in the front yard. He said he was supposed to go get her from her dad's that very night, but he had no idea she was married. I told him he could have her if he wanted. But yes, she was a cheater and she would probably cheat on him too as soon as she got bored or felt like getting new attention. I pointed out her car parked behind mine and he freaked out again. She was caught in another lot. He said she told him her car was being fixed and she needed $1,000 for him for repairs. My jaw dropped. She was lying to him for money. I don't know why. I was as surprised as I was. So AP helped me jack up her car and move it to a no parking zone. Then we coasted her. She was stuck at her dad's house with no response from either of us. She finally walked to my house to find that her car was missing and she couldn't get inside because I took back her key. She banged on the door and cried. She yelled out questions like, why wouldn't I answer her? Where was her car? Why was this happening? And other things I thought about calling the police, but her dad came by and told her to get in his car. She did reluctantly, she eventually found her car in the possession of a towing company. She had to pay a ton of money to get it back and her dad made her get a job at McDonald's to learn something about privilege and respect. She isn't happy, but I relieved the divorce was easy, which was great because I was already going through enough emotionally. I know she has no dating life with her dad hovering over her and on a part-time McDonald's income at 38 years old, I'm hoping men are spared the fate of courting her. Wow! You had to go through a spouse's worst nightmare. Discovering out of the blue after an anniversary that your spouse has been seeing someone else for the past two years is terrifying. I wish I could have spared you this reality. But thank you for sharing what happened in hopes that it could spare someone else heartbreak.
Let this be a lesson to everyone not to start a side relationship under the assumption that you won't be caught or deserve help paying debt or deserve more attention or whatever other unfair reason an immature person would give for cheating. The truth always comes out and chances are, if you're the one cheating, there will be hard consequences to face when your world crumbles apart. The moment your affair is exposed, you wish you could take it back or have a second chance. If your spouse is smart, they won't give you a second chance at keeping them if the relationship is bad. Of course, there's therapy and communication as a remedy. If all else fails and the relationship before starting a new one. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also comment below with your thoughts on what happened.